Hachi hard point, but either way, I know a player on the side of Ultra I'm paying a great deal of attention to is going to be Dylan Envoy. He struggled in hard point against Optic Texas. And on the flip side, I think Estriel is a good go-to to be that counterbalance of an SMG. Karachi, it is a fast-paced map. It is electric. And the energy at the end of the night, what can these teams bring to the table? The crowd's already feeling themselves, having a good time as well. So. We haven't seen LAG play yet today. They've been warmed up by presumably a few of the teams still in the tournament. Estriel, oh, inside there, two in the feed. So a lovely opener here, but very even when it comes to the kills department. Ultra alone managed to nick a few to a little bit of seconds there. Eight to be sure. And yeah, not too shabby. Now you got Scrap overwatching, keeping these players at bay. Had the intel on DiamondCon very early on, and this is easy overlooking moments here for Scrap. He does get cleaned up, though, for Assault to inside. Pressure now on him inside the time. A little flank coming through, and Estriel at least gets the kill before he falls, and the team kill from Kleenex maybe makes the job for LAG just a a little bit easier. Decent chunk of time giving away on P1, but LAG may be happy to chalk it up and rotate over towards that new time. A close bomb, though. They're going to be worried about the flank. The LAG all over it. Can they set up now and try to slow down Ultra on the approach? Fame's got a sweet corner, but Insight's going to take the long way round. Nice tags there, Struel. This should force Fame into action. Envoy forward. He sends it. A quick contest. His teammates have found the kills all over the place, so Dylan Hanlon can sit in that hard point and be happy. Phoenix on point on that break, and now the SMG duo for Toronto getting to work together. Difficult spot, though, for Monvoy. If Domicon goes up top, might have an angle, but for the moment, the Gorilla is not able to apply too much pressure. Kleenex comfortable here on the four spree. Final two lives remaining, though, for Ultra, at least on that hold. They do get broken down in 30 seconds. That is a good chunk of scrap time that you were able to collect, so Gorilla is going to be happy for it. A little bit of time to try to work on this rotation as well. Estriel going to be leading the charge. And, well, not for long. Let it as best he could valiantly. Assault there from top third, finding these kills, pushing over towards new. Big tags again across the map. See that big old pr protracted gunfight. As Insight manages to help out, but Kleenex flies forward. Assault, good coverage. Still not enough to really get the back spawns, though. That's what Envoy is right now. Sends it. Top rope. Not enough to get the kill. Envoy holes. Diamond Con's in. And there is going to be a bit of a trade now. Oh, he gets two. Envoy didn't heal. Didn't heal before he went in for the chow. Unfortunately for Diamond Con, he is going to fall. His teammates quick enough to get towards the time. Estriel, the opportunity to make the play. Plenty of his teammates now looking down towards this cross. And this is a beautiful moment of a break right now for LAG if they can hold on. On the kills, though, not flowing their way. Estriel and Fame doing the best they can and completely on point as well. What a moment right now for Gorillas. They are fighting tooth and nail against Toronto, who might be wanting to square up at this hill. Just one more try. Always that fight for P3 on the rotation as well. But Gorillas this has been a beautiful two hills. Weren't joking. Estriel's putting up a real fight in that point. Up and down he flights. Just a couple of tags, helping his teammates find those kills if they can, but superb time gained from a tough hard point. Across the map we now go. New hard points on its way. And so far, so good for LAG. And now Assault trying to work for these power positions. Well, not going to get there for long. Envoy cuts him down immediately. Got Envoy top green and only got his teammate in sight. Going to be top third. So you have LAG waiting for the flank to come through and trying to push through Coop at the exact same time. Assault at least going to be the presence that gets these guys away from the hill. But this is all about the set of gunfights coming through before either team can collect. Ultra a bit scattered in the moment. Domicon and Estriel making their jump, but inside he has been alive this entire time. Top third, basically the safety net for the squad, and you can see just making sure Gorillas can't collect any of this time. Oh, he's looking for streaks as well. Four completed, six is the target. Estriel once again finding kills all over the place. That's kill number five as Insight stays alive. And he's playing for that cruise as well. Ultra, well, it's not going to be a lead going into new. They're going to be down by maybe not quite 20 seconds, give or take about 15, but over towards Junk, they're getting those entry kills. Set up on rotation, and again, Insight can take his sweet time to play for this cruise. It is Money Hill, it is the Junkyard, a 15-point game as it pops, but at the end of it, Ultra might have built themselves a nice lead. Uh, streaks gained, no problem. Kleenex and Scrap, they're going to do what they can over by the new hard point, soaking up quite happily. Scrap is that nice hill to work with, bit of death laid there to work with. Find these kills, now take the lead back. As the San Diego's Gorillas have been a little quiet, now on the approach, Fame finds his first envoy, no help whatsoever. That's now the hit, a four-man strong push from LAG. They should be able to get the break here. Scrap in the tactical retreat, look for a nade or two. Here's the push, number one. 
No more on that life. His teammates looking for the trade. Kleenex from upstairs finds himself two. But the battle comes to a close, and Fame's the last man standing. I mean, hey, Fame just went on a five sprint break this hill. That is a big moment to shut him down, because Ultra could have turned that into a full 60. And well, now for the cruise missile that Insight has, Fame might be able to match one himself. Awkward timing there, though, for good old Diamond Con. Oh. And that's the kill, though. Kleenex just gives it away. Cruise secured there from Fame. And LAG still have the lead. Going over towards a P1. Might not be the worst time to call it in if you would like. Nate's up. <laughs> exactly that. Here comes the hit. Toronto Ultra, the purple arrows on the minimap. One of them's gone. Scrap will fill that hole left by the cruise missile briefly. Insight calls in his own, so anything you can do, we can do better, say Toronto Ultra. Israel flying into the hill, Kleenex there with the immediate trade, back in the time, Toronto Ultra. No holes in that ship. And I like that call from Ultra as well, just to sort of keep the game even keel, make sure they respond with a cruise missile of their own. And on the rotation, you see LAG are going to be there, but this has been a wonderful chunk of time on P1. Honestly, as far as the game is concerned, this has been the hill where Toronto have just set themselves apart. They're going to get the final 10 seconds of scrap time as well. A Decent little lead that Ultra have built. Ultra with a sweet lead so far. Pressure mounting towards noon. Let's sing the sweet lullaby that is the Toronto Ultra. Quick listen in. No, no, no. He went back to time. That's true. Hold up. It's going to be out of diner. Though. They're just free on time. Front to one door. Back to Outer diner. Weak. Cubby. Cubby in that one. Two. Back to two. He's held the dumpster. So weak. Uh, He's held the front hill. He's on back time. Back time. Yeah. Nice. One's front. I'm closing you. What's up, boss? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Arch is Arch is fine. Arch is still weak. That's right. What's still there, there, I think. 40 seconds. No, he's, he's just holding top window. Holding the top window, top window, Jimmy. Look for it. Yeah, still Tommy, one cap, one cap. Yeah, I'm just running at him. Out of our time, weak. One just cap. Get out of too. I see cap. He's laying out cap. One shot. Just make sure you're holding. Right. Yeah. Yep. We got left. We got deep. Hey, I'm going to... 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 I'm going you just put back in there. Yo, I have all the bridge, okay? I hear you. Yeah, top right, last one, top right. And then one on. Yeah, he's literally lying there. I'm all the fucking left. Left one, right? Nice one, that was. Dead to me. Right spawn next to you, bro. Dead for me, they could be dead. Nice. Alright, one could be dead. One more. Top left, top left. Top left, top left. Just play, 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 play. I'm in there, I'm in there. Alright. Top AC on me, bro. I'm in there. Top AC on me. I'm fucking. I spawned. I have red. I'm all red. Yeah, no. Yeah. I'm fucking. 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 I'm yeah, one more low on me. Two, I think there's two left. Didn't hit him. Nothing mid. Nice Top right. Could nice. be more on me. Like Top right. What could be? Top right. No, what's the right? right. Assault still? Nothing right, boys. Yo, Top fame. Yo, top fucking Koopa me. Head up. Are you? I'm on Koop. I'm on top Koop. In the back. Assault. Going. Just holding. Yo, look Koop. He's ran out. Oh, right, 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 right. Weak, bro. That was the dulcet tones of Late Night Radio Ultra, and they are singing pretty right now. The lead taken back in that little listening. They end Diamond Con Spree without any problems, and Kleenex is one hell of an issue to deal with over by Chikku. And there's been a super strong hill as well. Nice nade coming through from Fame to strip away a little bit of extra time, so maybe not quite a full 60 there from Ultra, but a good hill to at least build that lead. LAG, though, on that rotation. Diamond Con with the big two, but funnily enough, Ultra actually get this spawn out, so they're going to be torn Towards the new time, just a little bit faster. LAG still have their work cut out for them, but they are soaring around this time, trying to get these kills. Diamond coming from up top as well. Again, top third power position keeps the other team out of time. Oh, Diamond coming so hard to kill from up top there. A good nade might help out, but Fame roaming the lower levels of the map there with his rival nine doing a magnificent amount of work. Not a lot of time gained from this hard point for now, but you would expect that to change. LAG finally getting themselves in there. There's so many Ultra players, they're so close though. Well, Ultra are going to want this time as well, because you see LAG, they're already on that rotation over towards New, and they're trying to keep these guys out of time. Oh Kleenex, my god! Though, is going to secure it. Final 20 seconds there from Toronto, and two of those players that he killed, well, they're going to spawn out. Diamond Con holding the line alone. Alone. There's a very awkward spawn above those Ultra Boys. They better get in there quick. LAG hot on their heels. There's no way Envoy turns around for this one. Estriol now on the approach. Good shots. Able to get the second? No, the trades are there. Still, with that time gained, that is an LAG hard point. And this is the hold that LAG, they are going to need. Scrap the ripping players away. And now, unfortunately for Assault, if you're on time, two directions you are going to have to look. Worried about the pinch. And Ultra, if they get this break, they'll get the map as well. Scrap's going to try to bully his way through the front. Envoy and Insight now backing him up. Kleenex there on the pinch. Oh, it might work out. Scrap was a huge one. That should be it. The break is on. Estriel from down low, taken care of as well. Envoy in the hill, finding the time. 
Kleenex and Scrap might just be out here calling game. That is number 26 for Kleenex and Scrap on the four spree. The big break when they needed it the most. And, well, not that you necessarily need it, but oh. wouldn't have gotten the cruise assault there to gun him down. So that extra bit of utility that could have been from the sky, you're not going to have. And it's just Woo. a very tough spot. Players coming off spawn and even on a rotation over towards B1. Ultra are here first again. Kleenex is simply not missing. No, not at all. Tobias Jul Jonsson back at it again, still flowing. Three in a row, that's 29 in total. New hard points up, P1 looking to grab it. Doesn't quite get assault, his teammates have got the hill. Stay alive, Envoy, keep soaking. Estriel, the last man here to get some pressure on. Reinforcements arrive, the cavalry is here. Better late than never, you've forced Ultra out. This is an interesting moment. Kleenex again, they'll just back. He has been a walking <laughs> two-piece on these final three hills. And Here we just go. looking to finalize this game. Two more seconds collected in Ultra. Get it done on Karachi. Starting off their series right. A very strong start as well. LAG, plenty of life in the game there. But as we see in the game flow, once Ultra got going, there was no stopping them whatsoever. Huge bit of production there. We saw from Insight 26 and 14. Big workout Kleenex as well. Drops 31 in the end. Solid start, Chance. Over to the search we go. Yeah, that is an interesting scoreboard, though. That's a few games in a row now for the hard points where Envoy has been going double negative. So maybe today just hasn't been his day for the respawn. But in spite of that, you still walk away with the victory. But I think Kleenex and Scrap really were the two players that crank things up at the right time. If Kleenex doesn't get that three-piece at old time, LAG could have been fully set up towards new. But two of those players spawn out and makes it that much more difficult. Now, we saw the gunfights that Scrap was winning on that rotation. It was brutal to watch, but Ultra execute. They get it done. Maybe a yellow cautionary flag for Envoy there, but outside of that, business as usual. Highlights now. Plenty of pieces all aside. We saw many, many multi-kills. A ridiculous one from Kleenex in the, uh, the bottom side of the Monster Energy Fountain Room. Uh, unbelievable stuff. So again, across the board, a lot of very, very strong multi-kills. Fame with a lot of great plays. Estrial was the great breaks, but not necessarily enough as a team effort when it comes to LAG. I mean, I can't really think of anything else that stood out too much. It was just solid effort from Ultra from start to finish. Happy to see that go their way. That truly just was a good back and forth game. I think anytime LAG had a bit of a success, the cruise missile from Fame being a good example, always a response coming in from Ultra. Obviously, Insight with the cruise as well. That's the three piece, though, that really started to spiral the moment. Again, two players spawned out. Makes that rotation that much more difficult. And instead of a potential full 60 on the junkyard hill, well, by the time they were finished with it, Ultra had about a 60, 70 point lead. And of course, P1 just going to be scrappy, so LAG, not a bad fight, but couldn't capitalize on the 11 kill performance from Envoy. Yeah, big work there from Karachi. High rise S and D coming up next. We'll go back to Karachi for both our control and our final uh, map of this series. Of course, that search and destroy. Sub base, if we can see a big old sign of life from LAG, because I think at this point in time, I mean, we're looking at the, you know, coming into this tournament, Ultra, one of the click up favorites to win the whole thing alongside New York Subliners, alongside FaZe, alongside uh, Optic Texas as well. How, what are we seeing differently this tournament, though? LAG, strong resurgence, maybe not necessarily enough. Ultra looking a little weaker in, in places. Vegas taking them down a notch. It's a weird series. I, I mean, bar LAG pulling off this upset, what we're seeing, though, is the top four teams just being a clear-cut step ahead versus yeah. everybody else. And then the bottom eight teams, it is just chaotic in that situation where seemingly anybody can win on any given day. High-rise S&D, though, an interesting map pick to see. Toronto have only played it twice. They're 0-2 on it, and the Gorillas, they're bread and butter. They love to play high-rise. They'll do it for control. They'll do it for S&D. So much more of a comfort pick for the squad. Many more repetitions in the competitive environment as well. So if there's any opportunity to get back in the series. This is the map to do it. This is absolutely the map to do it. We'll see if that is the case. The monster pregame for the Los Angeles Gorillas. There it is. S&D second in the attack record. That is absolutely massive. And of course, those post-plant win positions, 100% chance if they get the bomb down, they're going to win. It's very, and for Major 2 only, so that means the homework they have done coming into the Major, they have been executing cleanly. I know throughout the Major 2 qualifying stage, they've had a few players, Diamond Con being a prime example of not looking quite as strong. He's been balling out all oh, land. These guys have talked their smack and, well, backed it up as well. Different environment they have brought in the, uh, the old animal sort of situation 
And again, for High Rise, s and Diamond Khan, one of the absolute star players to look out for. I know players like Scrap and Insight not exactly going to back down from the chow, but a deep bag of tricks the Gorillas have on this map. They love to mix things up. It's a late night lobby full of shooters here at Major 2, and we're going to High Rise. Long lines of sight, that man on your screen. We'll see if he can silence the haters. 1.5 in s &D so far at Major 2. In the 80% opening duel, win percentage is absolutely bananas. Some players out there might be meowing for him as well, but I just know Diamond Khan definitely going to be a focal point as well. It's B Street. Typically, he's going to roam. He'll do it on the offensive and defensive end. And that's one of those things. If you control that section of the map, it just completely opens up a breadth of opportunities for the rest of your teammates. So, all right, again, a happy one from LAG for Toronto. An 0-2 record. It's rare to see him on it, but they've been pretty consistent. These guys are going to be banning Terminal potentially the entire tournament. It's a few series in a row now. We're just waiting for the elevator to get down here and take us up to high rise. I got to fill the propane tanks. Please bear with us. Yeah, the propane tanks are empty after that absolute banger over control in the last series. But the elevator is on its way. We've called it. We're waiting for it. Uh, as you can see, all well, the players patiently waiting for it as well. And we appreciate your patience at home too. Mike Allu, you know, he's only 27. It looks fantastic. That's Honestly, exactly. doesn't surprise me. Doesn't I was looking at him, I figured it'd be 28, so 27. What do you know? Crazy. Well, you were close. Happy birthday again, Mike. Hope all's well. Almost ready to get in there, guys. We appreciate, again, the patience. A lot of fun had this day. Really a crazy day of COD. I mean, from start to finish, we have seen literally everything today. Good aces, good matchups, nice round 11, big game five finishes, some upsets, some crazy stuff. Fan favorite moments. And again, like you saw the best play uh, of, on a, a P2 Skid Row of all time. Well, the only thing we haven't seen today, though, is a, a really clean search and destroy performance from Toronto Ultra. Online, they've had a, a little bit of S&D struggles, but obviously at Major 1, Toronto was perfect. Here at the Major, though, the one and one record not quite as strong. The conversion rate as well. A team that is typically completely on point anytime they get the advantage. Well, especially so against Optic earlier today. They just struggled, and well, what we saw from the qualifying stages, it has rung true so far on land. Obviously, only two maps of repetitions now for this team, but again, massive opportunity, I would say, from LAG to strike. Yeah, this could be it. Again, looking at those stats, for those of you wondering what that post plant means, if the LAG players, they do arm the bomb, their chances of winning the round are exceptionally high. We'll see if that continues, because, hey, all these records are made to be broken. We're ready to rock and roll, boys and girls. Let's get it straight into map number two. Meow. Man alive, what a hail of explosives, gunfire, you name it. Three orbital barrage just got dropped right on top of that high rise, and nobody goes down, but everyone's ears are ringing. Yeah, waiting for every single nade to explode before you make any sort of approach down the map. A lot of barrels getting taken down as well. Scrap going to be responsible for the underground section of this map. Actually, that is a cheeky spot there from Kleenex. If anyone tries to go underground on the right side from LAG, and they're going to meet their maker. And of course, the B3 domination, Diamond Gun and Assault, love working it together. Scrap, well, doing a little bit of pole dancing, backs away, gets out with his life. Hey, yo. Hey, man, even Jesus had a plan B. He was a carpenter. Oh, another point. That's a lot of damage. Not enough for the kills, though. Estriel's going to get that. Walk away with it. Plenty of space now to work with. Over by that bomb site. Scrap, though, he's going to check it. He is going to get checked. And Insight now in a 1v4. Bomb down as well, and Nades landing at his feet. That was a perfectly played round there from LAG. They did not fall into any trap, and Assault doing a nice job watching the flank. No funny business here. No opportunity for the clutch, and that is a perfect round from LAG. They wait out all the tacks. They wait out all the nades. They make their approach, and no one gets caught planting either. They have plenty of time on their side. They let the kills come to them, and both Kleenex and Scrap just jumping into death. 100% post plant win still counts. Perfect. Still counts. Swapping sides now. There's a dangerous look in that opening round. LAG exceptionally strong. Nice two from Estriel there. 
We're going to see what Ultra have got in store for this attacking round. And then it'd be interesting to see if Ultra are ever be able to take a, a commanding sort of front over on the B Street. You see a lot of emphasis here for LAG. All the nades landing out the windows. I see a trophy on the other side. And well, if you were looking for B Street domination, Insight gives you the first blood. A big win on Diamond Con, and almost immediately they take it over. Kleenex might fall, but man advantage as well with a minute left to play. We'll go back and forth just a little. This is the plant. Envoy's going to get it down. Man advantage. For how long? Not long enough. Assault. The smooth moves. A quick dance. Now, looking back towards that bomb site. Tags in a scrap. Can fame clean up? This would help a lot. The slide. Oh my. Scrap guns him. Scrap still going. Gets both. That's a dominant finish from Ultra. Yeah, and Scrap's going to be thanking his teammate, too. I don't know if it was inside or Envoy that was left, but the tags into Fame there on the trade. Fame would have had an easy cleanup kill on Scrap until he gets the calm, and, well, he feeds him intel to Scrap. Man is hyper-consistent. Does not miss and automatically locked in, able to give you that round. So that's a nice little clutch there from Ultra. LAG kept things mixy. And just to get that first blood battle advantage against, against Diamond Con, it goes a long way. LAG attack. Trophy's back at it again. This is B Street. An explosive opener either way. However, I, at this point in time, LAG a little slower to the draw here, waiting out the explosives, waiting out the lethals. Happy to take their time as well. We see a lot of those slow B approaches. You got to watch all the little jump up spots. Scrap finding the opportunity to get aggressive. So he's made it here without any intel on him. In the meantime, though, Assault actually gets a downrange first blood on Insight. So we get to test their conversion rate once again. It's a clean first blood. You get plenty of time to work with. Scrap, though, is sneaky to get here. Backing a player down, but has to back down himself because player's on the outside, but a wise decision. Is LAG, well, it's three player challenging down the Whoa. lane, and Diamond Con gonna give it to him. Four versus two. He just doesn't back down either. Diamond Con managing to walk away with a big kill there. And now, again, Kleenex, 1v4 spot to be in. So, so tough. That's the round. A little bit of an ego chow, maybe just unwilling to relent on that B Street. LAG take the lead. Their bread and butter, absolute wheelhouse. And again, Assault getting that first blood just makes the round that much easier. You take your time, group up together, and no mistakes being made. If one player from LAG is trying to B Street, well, three of them were as well. Not that Diamond Con needed the help in that gunfight. He lives for it. Ultra now attack. Statistically, we don't see too much love towards the A bomb site. B bomb site, far more attractive, a lot more cover there. A lot more ways in and out of that site, not as open, but Kleenex, he's going downtown. Just trying to not give away the information. Cross on the deep side so no one can see you off spawn, but Toronto, you just see the stack that they have. Estriel actually getting tagged up and forced to bag down. Kleenex maybe trying to use this as the moment to be aggressive. You see Envoy made his way to the site. It is pretty clear. Dimecon's outer elevators, though. Maybe an opportunity to play spoiler, but no one's checking outer just yet. And in the meantime, Insight, I don't even know how he falls off the map in that situation, oh, but no. he'll take that advantage. 3v2 now for LAG. Starting to close in around it. Oh, dear. Kleenex manages to put it all down to fame. Last man. Now it's a 1v1. Envoy has the bomb still. Will he go for the plant? He's in a position to do so. Wait out the move. Big tags. Not enough for the kill. We have 30 seconds for this fight to take place. Yeah, Fame doesn't know what direction he went, though. Is he going for the child or going for the plant? Well, Envoy is hunting. Does he check the corner? Nope. Envoy misses him. So now neither player has any intel, but Envoy forced to plant the bomb. Fame in prime position to make the read. He's just going the wrong way. And now the round really begins. The 1v1. Envoy. Oh my word, it's enough damage, but it's not enough! Fame! His iron will enforced upon Ultra in the round. That's the kill and that's the defuse. Egos maybe a little out of control there from <laughs> Ultra. Kleenex did the same thing in the 2v1, just full sent it, Chow. But Fame, well, he brought the gunny. Guns Kleenex down and Envoy doing the same thing. Gets three bullets into him and then just gets caught on the cross. There's a wonderful play there from Fame and... Again, on that 1v1, no intel between those two players. And 
Now we get to see it from both POVs. Indeed, well, the power position that Fame was in, if you could call it that, he just held that iron up, expecting Envoy to re-challenge. Perfect, perfect play. Here it is from his perspective. Instant snap. No questions asked. 3-1. And in a godlike spot, too. Yeah, Envoy just a little bit lazy there in that moment, not trying to work for it, but... 3-1 edge and a great deal of damage this out by Fame. I don't see a trophy oh either, my. but the damage he does sets up Diamond Con for the kill. Another player hit by the nade as well, so Ultra feeling the pressure. Kleenex aggressive down the B street, able to get one, but the trade looking like it's probably going to come through. Oh, and no. Assault able to get it from God knows where. I think it might be the nade that actually helped out there, so sadly Kleenex helps out a little too much. 3v2 now, LG with the advantage on Envoy. Looking to get one back on a fame. Is this enough for the kill? No, he knows it's not. Stay hidden, son. Wait for the opportune moment, because here comes the bomb. Oh, the timing! Nothing can seemingly go right now. Oh, Estriel finds it. Oh, we're seeing a suicide by Semtex, too. Make no mistake, this is an elimination match. Ultra not looking super clean, and LAG taking full advantage. Right from the jump, Fame has to dish out maybe 250 amount to three different players. A great deal to set up Domicon for the first blood. And again, Kleenex with the effective self-kill. Granted, he was trapped anyway, waiting for the trade to roll through, but Gorilla's on high rise. Again, a map they are very happy to see. Well, I hope we're seeing another team potentially about to get monkeyed by the gorillas 4-1 thus far on high rise looking to tie up the series two more is all they need let's find out if we are going to go that way fame playing with a, a, an absurd level of confidence right now oh this is also b street ultra underground and down the street they're looking for the chows diamond con at least gives you the first blood he's always been on point oh, the man. radio tower indestructible at least the trade though from kleenex comes through we do have a 2v2 it certainly helps looking for kill number five here fame in a row, that is. Scrap cut down by Assault. All on a Kleenex. What can he do? Spots out Fame, beautiful shots, and a nice snap, but not necessarily enough. Grab that bomb, and maybe, maybe, be able to plant it over towards B, but he needs to take care of these players. Yeah, you can hear, no covert sneakers either, so if he ever finds himself in close quarters, it would be a bad time, but even worse, Fame from Top Heli has been completely on point, and LA Gorillas, this is a cakewalk of an effort for them. Almost yet to be tested. The first blood's on point. The trade's rolling through in any clutch situation. It's almost like LAG are playing with their food. Playing with something on that table. 5-1. Map point for LAG to type the series. Ultra have been left wanting in S&D. And I'd assume Fame's going to be going for the long range child once again just to see if he can get the freebie. Damage rolling through, just a single tag. Two players make it out. Ultra switching up the route, able to survive for just a little bit longer. They are indeed. I mean, so a lot of damage dealt. The nades were there as well. No kills this time, so Diamond Con doesn't get any freebies. Insight, he's going to be holding that far right-hand lane over by A, so no one's getting in that side. But if they do, it's not without being spotted. Still close on that bomb site, Envoy. He should be able to take care of a player or two. But if you get a cruise missile in this situation, that is curtains for you, Ultra. Well, you know, Insight's going to be in the back right window. See the spidey senses tingling of players around these sites, but a double stack right now effectively, or maybe Scrap going to back down, but Kleenex oh, oh, oh. scrapping on, boy, everybody's nearby B. Yeah, usual spot there for Fame. He's been pushed now. An aggressive looks here from Ultra, trying to shake up the attack. Estriel still with that bomb in hand. 35 seconds, a lot of time has passed here. They really want that cruise. Scrap going to back down as well. Insight has switched up the position, and Kleenex gets the first blood, but Insight, he's out there making the play. Goes on the flank, and the timing is just right. Now Scrap knows Diamond Con's above him. Wait for the Chow to roll through, and he can see it the entire way. It's Envoy that ends up getting the kill. One versus three for Mestriel. Hello. Uh-oh. Time. He's got to get the bomb down. Oh, no. He's making a fight of it, Estri! Oh, no! An unfortunate timing moment. He jumps off the bomb plant, where he conceivably could have got it down and take the fight from then on out, but either way, Ultra. Signs of life yet here on High Rise.
Yeah, unlucky for Estrell in the end, but I just like the play from Insight. They spot him yeah. in the back window early on, and they just eventually gave it up. Fame thinking about the cruise for just a little too long, and Insight getting aggressive, making a big play. Many rounds to go, though, for Toronto. They want to try to win this map, too. Their S&D, well, certainly compared to stage one, been a bit of a pain spot. Oh, night and day. Absolutely. Still a bit of time to change that. Diamond come back at it with Scrap here over by this long line of sight, the B Street. Deep pocket of defense there by the A side of the map for Fame and Assault. But for now, a couple of rattling a gunfire. Just over a minute to go here, and ah, that's a Kleenex right up in your face. That's what Damikon does. That first blood rate has been absurd this tournament. He delivers once again, but it does get traded out instantly. So it's a pure 3v3 and Scrap now going on the underground flank. And this has not been red. Number two and number three just need to post up and wait. Scrap eventually will get a freebie kill. Eventually. Here it comes. You might be able to get more than one. It's a great spot to be in. We're starting to string the damage together now. Quick plant from Envoy. That's on Envoy. The 1v2 situation. Can he find anything? No way, Fame. Absolutely eviscerates him. That's the map. That's the defuse. And that is 1-1 here at the major and that is a heads up play by fame as well the patience to let the kill to come to him instead of forcing the issue high rise was mapped it the grills were very happy to see they take full advantage and dominate toronto in the map number two still looking for a respawn victory though control could be it on karachi but either way fantastic performances through and through the first bloods for diamond con completely on point vein eight and two as good as it gets an assault as well showing up the feed there on the first blood category in eight kills as well lag barely breaking a sweat there in that game and well for high rise smd toronto zero and three on the year Bit of a soft spot for that team. Indeed. Well, heads up play again from Fame. A tremendous individual prowess we saw from him. The man just wasn't really losing gunfights. He gets himself into a power position top of the heli on the side of that Blackhawk. And he was not going down in those fights. So magnificent looks out of LAG. I Rise continues to be an absolute delight for them. Ultra back to the drawing board. Yeah, you said it, man. Not a win yet on it. Well, we'll see what happens coming up now. We go back to Karachi, ladies and gentlemen. We must have left something in one of those cafes. We seem to enjoy them so much. And yeah, that's right. We're playing control. So we're going to spend plenty of time in at least one of those cafes. Subbase and Karachi S&D to close things out if we have to get there. But for now, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to roll to a commercial break. Spicy series to close out the day. One of these purple teams is going home. We're going to break. You're going to get yourself a snack or maybe even a drink. When we return, we play more Call of Duty here in the CDL. Upgrade your game with a scuff. Save $30 on the official CDL collection at scuff.co slash CDL. Get better with the Scuff, the first performance gaming controller. Visit scuff.co slash CDL to change your game. The Call of Duty League is brought to you by Monster Energy, the official energy drink of the CDL.
Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Call of Duty League, not only taking place here in Florida, but also in Columbus at our command center CDL studio. Bunker deep underground where they keep the nuclear football just in case of an international event. We're ready to rock and roll into our third map. We've said rock and roll a lot tonight. That's why we're rocking and rolling. It's been a good day so far, a historic and iconic day of Call of Duty. And Charles and I are just getting things started here in this series. We go to Karachi. We go to Karachi where LAG have the opportunity to do the funniest thing ever. They were lights out completely, we saw on the high rise, and they are just looking for that one spoiler in the respawn. I know for Toronto Ultra, they're incredibly confident with the final three maps. They're one of the best Karachi controlled teams in the game. We have seen them play literal perfect sub base hard point, and even for the Karachi SD, they have been nothing short of exquisite. So I know they're going to be confident if you're the fan of the squirrels, but LAG, they have been an incredibly dangerous team, especially so in the land form. Mad. They're just looking down and take a, another top four team added to the belt. Another brought down. We'll see if that can happen, but still scary stuff. LAG have brought the thunder thus far in the week here. Looking at control, though, again, I mean, this is here in the tournament in Major 2. Both teams with big wins. Both teams with solid KDs. It really is the, uh, it's the attack and defending rounds, though. That's the big difference maker. Well, that's one team likes to play Karachi in high rise. One team has played a bit of invasion. So, Ultra, if you're dealing with invasion, that is why they're their defense is perfect in their offensive struggle point. When you go to a map like Karachi specifically though, Ultra, they ball out on both sides. If you're LAG, this is buckle down time. You're gonna need to play some perfect Call of Duty. And again, I've said it a few times in this series, it's been more of a thing in Hardpoint, a little less sewing control. Envoy has been struggling, but where he is faltered, Scrap has been fantastic. Those stats are especially going to be incredible. He dropped 44 on Invasion for the win. Oh, yeah. Man is an absolute shooter, but there's the map-specific stats. Might not have won an offensive round yet this tournament, but on Karachi, Toronto, second best team overall. Second best team overall. We'll see if that matters not here in LAN. And oh dear, well, something's happened. We're going to be diving back into this one ASAP. It's a draw, boys and girls. Well, we'll find out why in a moment. And if not, eh, we'll just roll on out. We'll find out why in a moment and get back into the matchup ASAP. And that's map number three. If you've just joined us, as you can see on screen, tied up one to one. God, I was excited for that one. I can't lie. You nailed that. Well done, Chance. Well done. A uh, slight controller issue on stage there. It looks like one of the members of LAG is dipped out. This should be a quick and easy fix. We'll get back into this speedy like. I mean, quick and easy fix or incredibly difficult to fix. Really, we have no idea. Uh, either way, though, I think the bigger point of concern from LAG, you saw overall 12th in round win percentage. So struggles on the attacking and defending side from LAG, but obviously in control. It's a home run situation. These guys have been going crazy in the small break that we've had in between the qualifying stage and the major to get ready for these very moments because they have been going on a tear thus far in this tournament. Oh, speaking of this tournament, Let's have a look how this tournament's been taking place. We've had one hell of a run so far. Our teams are still in it. This is to play the subliners in that lower bracket. Of course, Optic Phase tomorrow. That winner's bracket final matchup will be a treat. I can assure you of that. Both teams looking very strong indeed. Phase maybe a little shakier than we would have expected them coming into this tournament. Close matches against both the Thieves and the subliners got them here. But Optic, it's been very flashy chance and very, very fun. They've had the, the pop-off moments, and that is the reason why Toronto is currently in the loser's bracket, continuing to play and pushing us into the wee hours of the night. But I would say this has been a relatively predictable bracket. There's a couple of loser's bracket matches that could have gone either way, and maybe the Ravens upsetting the Legion, one of the bigger standouts. But again, land time is different. It is the opportunity for the Vets to reign supreme. And of course, more veteran players here on the side of Ultra as well, looking to clutch up and make sure they don't let anything get given away. Quick station reset here on stage before we can get back into our Karachi control. And going back to the stats there, Charles, yeah, it's both teams have had a fair run of the game mode in the tournament so far. Those game threes have been kind to both of them. The means at which they are winning those game threes, though, very, very different. Defensively, I think, heavy uh, for Toronto Ultra attacking rounds there for LAG. It could go the other way around because it's late and crazy, but... I'm very interested to see how this one goes down. And again, what we're testing here, not only for these players, is it's their sort of stamina. LAG, last match of the day, they have a long wait throughout the day. They have to conserve their energy, try not to burn anyone out, and they still have to be warm 
it's a difficult, difficult, difficult thing. Ultra as well have had a big day of COD, massive series against Ops of Texas. Now they find themselves in a similar situation. Well, I, with a 6-2 like that on high rise, Toronto Ultra do look a little bit vibe killed from their previous series. It was flat. There's a couple overchilds. They were making mistakes. It is not the sort of, you know, characteristic, perfect gameplay we're used to seeing from Toronto. So I think this is an opportunity for LAG to play spoiler, to crank up the heat and apply pressure. Don't get me wrong on a map front. These final three are all phenomenal for Toronto. They have been all year, but I just know that the vibes are not exactly at an all time high for Toronto Ultra. I mean, LAG, they've been coming out hot consistently, but there's just a, a look of solemnness, of deadness, of retribution and annoyance at their previous performance. Yeah, it's a mild, uh, it's a bit of frustration as well. I mean, you really want to get into this one. A, a slight issue slowed that down even further. The mental game. Esports is all mental, especially card. I mean, it's, you know, reaction times are one thing, aim is one thing, but the decisions you make and how you play, how you react to your teammates or in-game stimuli, incredibly important as well. LAG, they have come into this series full of confidence. At the end of the day, I mean, sort of, they've got absolutely nothing to lose. The expectations for them are not necessary to win this series. A man like this on screen as well, Estriel, what a tournament he's had. Every single map has been a fun one. Some standout plays, some brilliant moments, and so far, this is it. He's one of the top damage dealers in Major, in major 2 so far in the control mode. Look at that. I mean, he's been playing extremely well. I, I mean, I would say especially so for the fact that LAG, with the performance they had in the qualifying stages, it's been rough. They did not have a good time, and that is certainly a situation where the rookies, everyone on the squad is going to be feeling the hot seat. Roster changes are always out and about in the Call of Duty world, but these guys have overperformed and then some. They've been confident. They've stuck together. And I know a player like Estriel specifically, we have genuinely been watching improve from day one. So I've enjoyed watching him grow as a player so far this year. And I mean, still a big opportunity on the main stage. He has been dialed in he basically doesn't blink no not at all he's got his eyes on the prize not only playing for placement of course running up to champs playing for pride but also playing for prize money eyes on the prize here at the major one thing to lift the trophy another thing to watch your bank account explode there's a lot of cash on the line here for our players all year long one of the perks of being a professional Call of Duty player is playing for great sums of money. However, the stress and the difficult lifestyle that comes along with it, any position of uh, tremendous pressure is exactly what you're looking at here. And for these boys, damn, at Major 2, 150,000 clams and 100 CDL points for first. We've already decked out the bottom three. We'll see how far this one goes. And you can jump up in the CDL point standings quite a bit. Matches are like 50% more valuable for a win on the lower side, but they ramp up at how many points you get as the tournament goes on. So it's not just the cash that you're playing for, but 30 points for LAG can go a long way. Literally just the fifth, sixth spot there from the Ravens. They went from the 12th seed coming into the tournament. They've now jumped into the top eight, which of course is that champs threshold. And LAG, again, already in a good spot for how well they have performed this tournament and a win here they launched themselves up could be a, a massive boon and benefit long term to get that degree of separation but lag just waiting fixing that controller resetting the pc whatever they got going on gearing up and getting ready to get back into that karachi control Estriel's stats have been bonkers in the game mode. He's going to have to deliver that performance and then some to take down Ultra. Stakes just a little bit higher. Oh, the stakes are pretty high indeed. And again, we will be looking towards that road to champs. I mean, even though it's only Major 2, we should absolutely be thinking about it now. Getting out of the bottom eight, well, into the top eight, rather, the bottom side of the board, those four teams will not be going towards champs. Here we go, ladies and gentlemen, map number three. We're going to Karachi. We're playing control. This is for the lead in the series. You're going to have Ultra starting off on the defensive end as well. If you're an attacking round from LAG, want to come out, punch him in the mouth straight away and try to set the tone. We have had some lightning fast control games so far in this major. We've already broken the record at a seven and a half minute pace. You want to play the objective as quickly as possible. I know Ultra typically clean off the opening break, though. And more bad news, LAG. They are many things, but they are not yet ready for Karachi control. At least the Salt's controller works. He's been tapping his boys. Look, he's just coming over there, bullying him, stealing lunch money. Uh, yeah, sadly, we still have an LAG issue. We'll get back into this one, hopefully ASAP. 
once we diagnose the problem. And for you guys who can't see what's going on at home, <laughs> Ultra got right in their spawn. They had him in the absolute trap, but we'll find out what happens. Guys, we're going to go to a quick commercial break, find out what the hell is going on here, and come back and play Control. Here we go, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to the Call of Duty League. Have you played a bit of Warzone Mobile, Charles? 
No, I, uh, I, I don't play any mobile games. I know it's like it's the, the kids. They love it in their fingers so fast. Mine, not so much. I can't even play keyboard and mouse. I'm, I'm oh. cod through and through, man. That's my guy right there. Well, we're almost ready to party. Scrap, get that yawn out, son. We got a game to play. Fist bumps are done. Synchronized as ever. With all the precision of a Swiss watch. I've no idea what. Oh, he's putting game, game grip. grip on. Game I was grip. like, I thought he was yep. miming a phone call, calling an ambulance for the body bags they're going to need. Like, Adam Assault is a man of many talents, but he keeps the most in the Call of Duty range. I don't know about how many mime performances yeah, he's, not, he's bringing to the table. He's not a mime. He's going to let the speaking in game do itself. Over to the Monster Cafe, we'll be going in hardpoint, but not so much here in, uh, in control. Very much paying attention towards that cafe, the B zone, the A zone in the middle of the map. Adam Assault, also a, uh, a red card uh, player now. I saw the snakes he was throwing. Ooh. Started that game. Form honestly on point in just a moment where I'm reminded, thank God for Zuma. Not even kidding. Getting that snake in GA through has been a massive benefit to this year. He's my MVP. Saint Zuma. The patron saint of no snakes. Speaking of assault, flying into the feed. Looking for that map control before the boys of LAG get into the zone. I love them shots. He's right back in it. That new controller is spitting. Didn't have to mind that one. Just bullet straight led down the lane. And well, two players underneath them. There's trade number one. Doesn't read the next player underneath, but Scrap, well, gonna have to take his time or was Adam Assault making moves. That's four in a row. Unfortunate for him, all of his teammates are dead, but maybe an opportunity to swing things over and get a bit of map control, play for some spawn kills and Look for number five. That's a freebie. Next guy off spawn. Well, hey, he gets away. A cruise missile can go a long way in this game. It does go a long way. All the way from the sky to the ground. LAG, though, first segment at eight gone. Assault still going his little run around, trying to find these last few players. That's it. Six and oh. It's perfect. He has streaks. Only There's player a awake seven. on his team. Yeah, no, he's still going, but his team right now combined are what? One in ten. Someone right now from LAG needs to get a kill just to get out. Adam Assault laying waste to ultra finally he gets dropped in lag at least now get towards the time but fame gonna have to stay alive i mean no one's earning trophies but assault right now in this moment so fame gonna have to do his very best to dodge every nade gets down to about half hp but able to heal on up problem is well scrap and kleenex are coming it comes that monkey wrench to ruin their game plan it's a flying kleenex gets it Stops them for an hour. Estriel, win it with a pistol. Capture the zone. Oh my God, what is this whack-a-mole in the zone? Diamond Con gets involved a little late. Can he get a second? Kleenex. God, he's hard to kill. I mean, they're wasting a beautiful Adam Assault performance right now. 15 seconds left. Someone's got to get on the objective. Oh. And now he can't win the gunfight and insight backing these players down. Oh, what could have been or maybe what can be. Fame stopping the clock. One gunfight to win. And he cannot get it. 10 seconds. Time is ticking down and you're forced the flood into a difficult site. Only four seconds to go. Estriel not going to make it. And Adam Assault able to get 11. But his team couldn't give him much. So Toronto, they get the round. What a crazy round and what a fun one. Well, you'll take it, Ultra. Final moments there. Kleenex getting the job done. Seven and five. A lot of damage dealt as well for, for that sort of round. We're going to swap sides and see if Ultra can get the attacking rounds done now. A little bit more calm, a little more composed after that. A little bit of technical issues. The shenanigans are over. And assault, that 11 of 4 looks very unusual, doesn't it? I mean, controller's certainly working, so he was clearly not the player with the issue. Maybe one of his teammates should have taken a, a bit more time. Again, the struggle point the whole way around, but Ultra back to business. Trophies out, three through mid. Two players going to be out and around this time. Kleenex rolling up top, but from LAG, nobody home. They were stacking the B zone. Maybe ready for a, a cheeky little push, but that's not the case. And that is an early investment of the cruise missile. They're looking to bounce back with a dominant round on defense that they might not get. Kleenex stripping it away. Stripping it away, indeed. Three in the feed. Three on the spree comes to a close. Two on A, though, on the capture. And this is nice pressure towards B as well. Starting to play the long game, but Scrap has been devoured by the remaining members of the Gorillas on that side of the map. No problem. A secured, 2 minutes and 16, and a ton of lives for both teams to throw at that point. In LAG at this point, almost not even looking like believers. Even in the player games, maybe struggling just a little bit, feeling like they're on the back foot. And now maybe some freebie kills for Insight. Dang. Any other player it could have been. Assault trying to dance as much as possible. Assault 
doing everything to hold it down, but as he falls, well, Toronto, you can see where they're on on the minimap. Two players near that B zone, setting themselves up for some spawn kills. It looked like Toronto Ultra taking a page out of Trey Zero's book. They're pistols only on the approach towards the point. Here's the cap, though. Halfway through it. Estriel slowed down. Diamond Con, heavy damage there. Scrap, good work. Envoy, though. Oh, cut down through the window. As Kleenex now on a four spree. Keeping the capture going. There's the contest. Can he win at least one here? Waiting for the boys to get there. There's one. Oh my god, he got two. The third would have been absolutely preposterous, but that's enough time for the reinforcements to arrive. The back door. Here comes Envoy. Insight in the feed. And that could be it. Well, good news. They have a trophy. Bad news. They just don't have any lives or presence or kills. Kleenex is feasting in the respawns against LAG. Hey, Dios mio. No time wasted. Two quick caps coming through and almost not a trade to be found. LAG falling a little bit flat here on Karachi control. The, the, the second one from Kleenex looked like an unwinnable fight that again, somehow you just make it happen with the rival sometimes. Magnificent work. We're looking at the 3-0. Can Ultra get it done or will LAG start to fly because these stat lines are bizarre. I mean, you have, what, 6 and 23 combined right now from Diamond Con and Estriel Diamond Con. Shades of two players we can get from them when he's on point of force to be reckoned with, but occasionally just falters, and right now certainly struggling. Opening break though, Kleenex right back up top, is home, able to get one, doesn't even get shot. Man, has been a walking two-piece all series, and he's gonna get it once again. So smooth. Silky attacks through that rubble of the middle of the map. Nobody quite does it like Kleenex, and he's looking for a few more. Dead silence now as well, so with a streak in his back pocket, that boy could cause some serious damage, and this is the way it starts. Nice work out of Estral, just to be able to stop that hurricane before it started to hit landfall. Yeah, even when he was stunned, he's still winning his one. Scrap getting pretty good intel. Two players playing around the top three area, Diamond Con and Estriel together. And Diamond Con showing up in the feed, so there's a little bit of life, and Fame has made his way towards the objective and wins the gunfight from the time as well. Scott throw Bang. over top of the coordination from the nade, able to get him out of the, the objective. Now from LAG, maybe a little concerned about getting away from your spawn inside, spotting these players on the cross and the wings of the map. Ultra attempting to keep under control, but now maybe a two stack coming through. A couple players from LAG staying alive. Yeah, LAG starting to stay alive and absolutely get himself involved here. Here comes the streaks though. This is gonna certainly slow down the progress at A. Bite some time as we watch Diamond Con take a tumble after a cruise missile lands on top of him. Estriel trying to stay alive now, keep his spree going. Envoy's moved into A. And there's Insight through the window. But hide your kids, hide your wife. 20 odd seconds to go. And Diamond Con, well, going to hide behind the, the old chair, sofa, whatever it's called. It's definitely old school, making his way. Crossing a single, trying to open the map back up. Ooh. Kleenex on the flank, can't get it done. Nice set of kills, though, but where Kleenex couldn't get the kills, Envoy and Insight absolutely do. A scattered attack right now from the Gorillas, and, well, only five seconds left on the clock. Three, where we get stopped on the A zone. Ultra, an opportunity to close this game out. Here we go. One more wave of kills. No, not enough time. A minute, though, to play. 15 lives left for LAG to still attack. Not over just yet. Kleenex can hear something, as can we below him. Ah, ha, ha. Catches these players out on spawn. The guns are up at the ready. Not going to go any further than that, though. Ultra now scrambling on the defense, trying to catch out these players before they can even get close to the zone. Burn the clock. Yeah, Estro going to be playing with the spawner as well. He's got another fight with Kleenex and maybe buying some time for Diamond Con to work the flank as well. Estriel keeping them pinned in their spawn, and this is the moment to hit the go button. Flood over towards that B zone. For the moment, only worried about two players. Scrap able to, well, show up in the feed and slow the push down, and, well, Scrap really slowing things down. Picks up two kills. Estriel oh. has to do it himself so far, so good. And that's a five spree and the pressure around the time. Oh, he was doing it for a moment long. Diamond Con there now into the zone. One more player there. Diamond Con's got to go huge. Help the boys stay alive here. Scrap can't get out of spawn. The player has been forced off the point right now. Assault got to be the man to dive in there. Anyone watching it? No, they haven't seen him. He's able to get in there, but he's waiting for more than just one. Estriel on a worldwide tour going through the middle of the map, cleaning house. Still need more players on the point now for LAG. Oh, he's waiting for just a little bit of help. His teammates right now struggling to get nearby. Fame the closest one, and he gets cut down along the way. Assault versus the world. Diamond Con. 
Picks up two, and well, the other two players are going to be coming off spawn, but he actually lets them through. You're taking the close gunfights with the MC. W oh Diamond Con for number three. The trades are rolling through. Five versus three in the feed. You just got to get to that objective. Wait a minute. They're still able to contest. Estriel, the damage is in. We're falling asleep with the wheel, and LAG have captured the point. They got around. They were looking for putting on a little bit of pressure, and the gun's starting to get a little bit hot. Now for LAG, Diamondcon struggling the first two rounds, but nice little pop-off performance in this one. Assault just begging for some help, and he saw it appear in the feed as well. A nail biter of a round, but LAG continue to fight. Still, though, a decent ways to go. You see certainly on the slang performance, nearly all four players positive there from Ultra. They've been feasting in the kill feed. Oh, yeah. This is a big, big series, again, for both of these teams. CDL points, prize pool placement, you name it. All this very, very important. Climbing the ladder of the league as Kleenex climbs his way up towards top AC. On A, we find Envoy. Quietly, now dead. As Estriel. He's looking to clean up as well. Insights finding kills in the feed. There's Kleenex, and that should be a very solid bit of ground covered. Diamond Con's going to make his way up top now as well. He should get sniffed out. Progress A. Solid work from Ultra. Yeah, Ultra just on point. I like that LAG was taking their time just to sort of mess with the timings of the round, but Ultra still able to execute nearly flawlessly, and the A zone might just go almost uncontested. LAG right now just trying to solve the Envoy problem. He's been able to heal up, but eventually the late trade comes through. Assault, though, going to give you two, so it is nothing but the slow capture. No extra space is going to be taken outside of maybe a scrap flank, but right now a ton of map presence in control. Assault pushed out Junkyard, but the other players for Gorillas, a little bit stagnant. They've let him through, but they don't seem to mind. Number five finally turning on the minimap. They're waiting for Scrap to make his appearance. Got to watch out for Scrap. Got to watch out for this flank play. If they don't deal with it, it's going to become a problem. Fame in the feed. There we go. Scrap springs into life. Oh, that's a chow. That's a win. Enough to buy his boys a little bit of space, but not enough time. Yeah, still not getting a close spawn either. So Ultra is still going to have to do a little bit of a hike before they can make things mixy. Two players working. Well, make it three top red. Kleenex and Insight. Long time duo following each other up, but so many corners to check. Swam. And Fame just going to shred. Assault wins his one as well. And Tommy Khan in the day one spot. Envoy well, gets his own trade, but Fame delivers. LAG still holding on. Six HP. That's so close to it. Scrap back at it again, like waves crashing upon the rocks of LAG. Can they finally find the opener? There's the contest. Scrappy inside the cafe. Fame's on the outside as well. Sends it. Oh my god, Scrappy! Envoy! He found all three! Stack it! Surely the opportunity now as Estriel dives over the wall into the fight. A quick reload from Scrap. The force spree. The guns are still smoking hot. The first segment's gone. Scrap finds himself too. There's streaks. He's taking a crappy all over the back alley. Getting it done, Toronto finally putting the stamp on this game. A moment of domination. And Adam Assault nearly made the play. He picked up two, but well, Envoy wiped everybody off the map and then scrapped together that duo towards the end. It's the Americans for Ultra able to pop off on Karachi. All right, mate. All right. But strong showing there. 3 1. An incredibly slow start from the Gorillas in the beginning of that map. I mean, the first two rounds looked very dire. If not for that one turnaround, this would have been a faster, faster game indeed. But kudos again to Ultra. They managed to close it out in the end. And again, it's just one window. You find it, you punch on through, you get enough bodies onto that point. But it takes a lot of coordination. It takes a lot of team kills. You can't necessarily get it done alone. You have to get two, maybe three down for that opportunity to push in and actually you know, convincingly capture the zone. They get it done in the end, though. And now we look at our stats. Yeah, I mean, Kleenex absolutely feasting, 5,100 damage. He was a walking two-piece. You see, he was able to pick up 20 non-traded as well. So he was an absolute machine in both of the respawns that we had. 
I gotta say from LAG though, it quite literally was just a round one being wasted. Assault got 11 kills, started off 7-0, and but his three teammates were just struggling to get out of their spawn. And again, we've seen it time and time again from Ultra. Unless you are playing perfectly, you are going to be punished. You make one mistake of a round or one poor performance, and it is almost a certainty that you are not going to win. High level game, that's what we do. We punish these teams who make the mistakes. Highlights once again, folks, as we close out Karachi here. We still have one more Karachi left in the series, and that's the final map in the series. That's the S and D. We have to go the distance here. But Ultra have put themselves in a strong position. The advantage is there. They have had the edge in the respawn game modes, and now the next hard point could well and truly be there. Sub base, I do believe, my friend. That is the, the good old snow map. It has been a uh, sort of backbone for LAG, at least early on. But as the year has gone on and the hill slash spawns have changed, they've struggled just a little bit more. And I know Ultra, a team that has thrived in that new chaotic environment of sub base. But I think the highlights, again, Kleenex was just a walking two, if not three piece. And just a very difficult player to deal with. And even towards the end, it's just those very quick pop off plays. Scrap finding the routes through, and his shot just looks absurdly clean. We talk about how the energy feels a little bit low on the main stage, but if you're just watching this man's POV, you're not feeling it is all absolutely electric stuff there from Scrap. And again, him and Envoy, wonderful coordination in the end. Oh, yeah, that was a last round in his magazine to pick up that player just jumping over the fence line. So there we go for Ultra now. Yeah, it's a sigh of relief there. It's a little bit of sweat off the brow for Insight. You're not quite done yet. You're not out of the woods yet, but you are that bit closer. Can they close out here on sub base? We go to the snow map. And early on, I would be singing the same story that I was on High Rise, but the grill is incredibly happy to be here. But I know the last time we saw Ultra on this map, it has been one of the very few teams that we have seen handle rotations perfectly, completely on point with blocking spawns as well. This is a team that operates like machinery. But I know if they make a mistake, Gorillas, they're used to the gunfight styles we have on this map. We're used to the power positions. Adam Assault was shooting in the map three. And as long as you don't see a slow start out of Diamond Con, they are absolute force on this map make no mistake they're a lethal threat take another look at the monster pre-game for toronto ultra coming in this one again the hard point's been very very strong for them particularly against lag in the series will that be the same here holds not coming through though chance the whole percentage thus far not ideal 10th when it comes to that one so what do we want to see we want to see them break these hard points and try to hold on to them what's the deal here mate i know you want to see them clean up their holds this is very much a map where you're getting those early rotations and if you get breaking down it can be a feels bad moment because if the team breaking can handle the spawns well, you can really chain hills together on this map, controlling the spawns, especially around that sub hill. If you are ever spawning on the deep sub section of the map on a P2, a P3, or a P4, it can be a devastating moment if you're getting those spawns at the wrong time. So when you get those holes, you got to keep them for at least the first half of the hills. I know there's a lot of big scrappy fans in the venue right now. I see a young one just off to the side. Massive fan of scrappy just walking around the venue, quietly alone. That's right, it's Hixie. <laughs> <laughs> That's an inside joke for the folks inside the venue. For you at home, it's time to get into the game. Ladies and gentlemen, map number four, Toronto Ultra taking on Los Angeles Gorillas. We're going to the hard point. Opening salvo as well. Diamond Con, a force on this map. It's scrapped. That is just a head glitch. You are never going to win that fight. Fame looking for some trades, but the trade's going the way of Ultra. Esriel trying to find himself an inside, and he's going to collect. And at least for LAG, you get him off the time. Esriel, though, chasing Whoa. Ghost, but hey, he's ahead of the game. Pistol win right there. That is a 3 0 start from Esriel, and some big kills by Diamond Con as well. They don't flip the spawns just yet, but. At least they get Ultra out of the time. Just a difficult moment to collect any of themselves. Astro is, he is flowing right now, man. I mean, it's that late night game. He's been shooting bots for about seven hours. He's feeling himself. He's looking good on the map. Can they look good in the rotations as well, though? Ultra's going to get the final few moments here on P1 over to P2, and that's all theirs inside. The sub base. And this is the test of their holds as well. You get the full four man set up, and that is the start that Scrap and Kleenex were looking to have. Cut the players off in that push at their legs, and it's going to take that much longer to get back in the mix. Diamondcon might find an entry, but still such a long way to go. That's two kills flowing their way, and maybe the holds will continue to be a pain point. 
Scrap, though, nice angle and nice timing. Oh. He gets back in the mix, and he gets the damage to help you with three. That's a five spree. That is a perfect hold, at least thus far. And great spawn management so far as well. Toronto Ultra running this score up. Oh, man, nice shots from Envoy. Not enough to get the last one in there, though. He let go of the trigger. Lovely time, though, gain from Ultra here on this point. Looking towards Noob. It's very much LAG's map. You've got this part of the hard point sweet for Ultra. 10 seconds ago. And we saw LAG on this map just two days ago where they actually have players like this pushed out and going for these cutoff kills, but they didn't actually block the back spawns for the P3. And I fear they might not be doing the same thing again. Got to be very cautious about where these players are going to be popping up on the minimap. Trades being exchanged, but the first players off spawn are on LAG, so the back spawns are secure. Scrap's going to slide it and die immediately on the push. Kleenex now through the tunnel. No trophies to be found. He's got to get this done with his gunny. He does have his lethal and his tactical to play with, but a little unfortunate bit of geometry on the floor there has slowed that down. The source up next, but it's no problem. Kleenex on a three. Yeah, he just glides himself into the, uh, the old irons there of Kleenex. <laughs> Whether or not it's a tricky word to say, it's also a tricky moment for the spawns. Fame. LAG, most players spawning in the back, but Fame just completely spawns Dude. out. So on rotation, Fame can make the play. You're trying to collect the final 20 seconds of scrap, and Fame continues to deliver. Picks up a two-piece, oh. and he is still going. The longer this man lives, the more opportunity his team has to come and help him. But he is desperate for this help. Oh, they're committing hard to bring him down. Fame, retreat. No one there to help out. Now Assault's cutting through mid. Is this enough to get the boys closer to the point? Whoa, Estriel doing what he can, but still in the back line. The spawns are there for Ultra. They have won the war for the spawns for the Dry Dog. Yeah, it's just so difficult. Fame buys you so much pressure, but really that only gets you maybe seven seconds of time that Toronto were not able to collect. Fame again leading the charge for his team. Maybe a slide out and jump top three, or maybe just try to rip this guy off time. Scrap in the back, Kleenex in a corner. Nice wins as well. Diamond picks one up. It's one guy on time and scrap towards the back and now scrap that last man standing. Toronto going to spawn out and that is a nice little moment here from LAG trying to collect this time. Time to God as well. They're finding the time. He is the captain of the sub right now. An unorthodox position to be in, but hey, it's a piece of cover. Put scrap down final few moments in the hard point. And because Scrap being a little bit aggressive, well, two players from LAG spawn out and get over towards Warehouse. One's going to fall, and Adam Assault might be there in short order. Number two and number three, setting up the pinch. They're going to get it done. The teamwork's showing off there from Toronto. They win the rotation. They get both sides pushed out, and now you might be in a bit of a blunder. Scrap on one side and insight from the other. Every direction the LAG players go, they got to deal with an AR. As in somebody behind you still, Diamond on red. Kleenex gets it. on Envoy in the front line inside upstairs he should be able to cause some problems here no trophy he has one but he's not opting to use it here kleenex looking for the streaks ah he doesn't get it we've been here before kleenex haven't we three though for inside fame shooting hot this series doing what he can but still that last man standing around the time scrap able to win his one and that just gives his time to get his teammates in position, but Kleenex gets caught. 10 seconds, you don't want Toronto to get in the kill feed. Well, LAG getting all the kills. That's a four-man wipe. They don't flip the spawns, but maybe buy themselves an opportunity to get set up around new. Get set up, get cozy, get ready. Stick the kettle on and hope for the best. That open hard point for now. LAG are in. Sorely need the time. Insight introduces Salt to the barrel of his MCW. Now Scrap just back in his home. Fame's been waiting to make his move over by Long, but Kleenex, well, if he checks every corner or maybe doesn't need to, looking for that easy cleanup kill, but forced to back down. So he's calling out Fame and looking for the rest of the guys off spawn. But this has been a P1 where Scrap has been hanging on the hill almost completely uncontested. Finally, Fame's there to take him down. It took a while for LAG to make the move, but now they found their way to the point, looking for those final 20 seconds. They're going to get it, and players from Toronto are starting to spawn out. It's only going to be Scrap in the back. This is going to be a mess. Scrap in the top left-hand side of the minimap is going to be something to watch out for. Sneaky Scrap. He's on that fence line, just providing information to the teammates. Where are they going to be spawning if they're brought down? And only one player's turn. Diamond Con may be partially aware, but if they weren't before, they certainly are oh! now. But look at the timing. Scrab gets it perfectly. And LAG oh! just not keeping track. And now they're getting gunned down. They're getting gunned. Oh, no, Jamie Craven. A slaughter on the inside of the warehouse. All those monster crates. 
covered in pieces of LAG players. That's a missed opportunity there for the Gorillas. And again, the coordination and timing from Toronto continues to be damn near perfect. Diamond Con gives you two, and Envoy again in hard point struggling. Another double negative performance, but who really cares when you're up by 80 points? LAG do break through for the final 30 seconds, and maybe some split spawns coming through. Number seven, if he wins his gunfight against Envoy, and he does, LAG may be an opportunity to claw their way back in this game. Fame control. Diamond Con starting to get a little hotter. Can't stay alive in that situation for much longer, though. 17 of 14 for him, 17 of 15 for Estriel. LAG starting to get things going here. And LAG, they really do just love to push this time out and be as distant as possible. It's great as long as you handle the spawns and incredibly annoying for the Toronto players to deal with. Scrap, though, the first one to fall, and maybe LAG almost want to leave it open. Ultra nearby the hill. Estriel roaming back towards the time. It's contested for the moment, but hey, he's set up there for the trades. Open time, though, is the spawners from LG. Roaming back over to collect. I mean, they've just been so pushed out this entire time. LAG right now just being a nuisance. Yeah, pulling it back as well. Time and time again, finding the kills and keeping that hill in their hands. Fame looking for kill number five here. Ah, he gets it, but he doesn't get the player he first saw. So unfortunately, no streaks there. Streaks very handy in this map as well. As Assault now, pressure on the point. 15 seconds to go. Doink. And we scrap now. 21 and 18. He and Kleenex are driving Toronto Ultra forward, trying to close the series out here. Rotation's complete. Ultra will have control of the new hard point now. Moment of the game. If you can't get this break, you will not get the game, and you need to make it fast as well. They got the intel on scrap, but it's Envoy that I think that might end up being the got to play spoiler. Kleenex gets the first kill, and you can see they're just waiting for these players to roam out of P2. Ooh. That is last man standing. He's going to fall in Toronto again. They put the pressure in the right spots. Sub base, they are making this their home. Not winning the game here, but they're doing a damn good job of getting close to that finish line. Hard point still in the hands of Ultra. Slow hit now through the front from the Gorillas. Here comes Fame. Tagged. Estrell from up high. Nice work on the teamwork there. Assault brought down. Envoy holds the front. LAG just too flat. Not even thinking appropriately about these trades. The teamwork just simply not there in a victory lap from Ultra. Spawn kills from Envoy. Trying to get those stats back up. But unfortunate for him, Estriel going to trade him out. As we start this new Dang. time, Ultra just going to be eight seconds away from closing out the series and really sealing the fate of the top four. Time to throw bodies towards that BTR. Get over towards that broken down tank. Scrap's going to be the man up top. Stun connects, but not enough to really get these players off of it. Ultra are far away. Lots of time to be had here for LAG. A matter of moments, though, as the end of their tournament looms. If Envoy can poke a hole in this defense. Absolutely no rush. You can let the kills come to you. But Diamond Con, well, he takes the fight nice and aggressive. And that's going to be another four down there from Ultra. LAG holding on. They haven't actually pushed anything uh -oh. out. And uh -oh. more importantly, they don't have a uh -oh. trophy. Players getting cut down along the way. No trophy, no time. Ultra, they've made it through. Hope fades. Into the point, got to get going. LAG trying to contest. There's trophies, there's players, there's everything. You name it, it's done. To Entrell to survive the onslaught of the Gorillas, they will not be monkeyed. As LAG fought their hardest late into the night, they were not able to close it out. Admirable performance, but at the end of the day, Ultra just too strong. They will advance to Sunday. Death taxes in the top four teams, owning the rest of the league in this season of the CDL. Maybe a, a couple different opportunities, I'd say, for the Gorillas on the map, but Ultra, again, when they're on point, the teamwork's showing off. A couple late flanks there from Scrap on the P2, getting the timing and coordination perfect, and maybe just unfortunate at the end from LAG. No trophies around the time. Means those nade kills are gonna be feasting, but Ultra take care of business. They are going to see Sunday. Maybe the opportunity to get some revenge on the teams that knock them down, but tomorrow is going to be a very dangerous day. Oh, indeed. Well, a huge day of COD tomorrow, as if today wasn't enough. Bright and early COD fans will see you all again, same time, same place. Unless, of course, you're one of those people watching in the distant future. In which case, I hope your team won. We didn't forget about you. When you're re-watching this VOD, we know who you are. And if you stuck around this long, kind of impressed. I would turn it off after the map ends, unless I'm checking the stats. Oh, you want to check those stats, because remember, time's a flat circle.
All right, all right, all right, all right. We'll see you all tomorrow. Very exciting time though to be had here in the CDL Major 2. Shout out to the Miami Heretics. They took an early exit from the tournament. They put on a real fun show indeed. Stats there on your screen, ladies and germs. The damage dealers there, Scrap and Kleenex. Every time we change over to Kleenex's POV, it does seem like he's doing something horrible and profane to his opponents. The gunfights look so, so dangerous, but that's the series. Strong showing on that high rise, search and destroy. But apart from that, the respawns were absolutely the damage dealers there for Toronto.